Paul Wedgwood. I'm known online as Loki. I'm the uh, owner of Splash Damage, the game developers behind Enemy Territory Quake Wars in collaboration with id Software. And I'm also the lead game designer on the project. I'm going to be showing you the, uh, the game. Enemy Territory Quake Wars is a brand new title from id Software that's been developed by my company, Splash Damage, over in London. We're a kind of ex-mod team that worked on you know, Quake 3 technology and stuff like that back in the day as mod makers. So we're really pleased to have actually ended up being a AAA game developer. But as a multiplayer combat game, what's worked out really nicely is that you can play against bots offline or you can play online against human opponents. So the demo I'm giving now is playing against bots on my own PC without having to be connected to the internet or anything. Now what I wanted to show you was how, you know, using a, uh, a, 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 having picked a combat class, and I can choose between the Strog, who are a kind of advanced alien race, they're biomechanically augmented, and have really advanced alien technology, or I can choose the GDF, who are more conventional, a military force with traditional weapons, rocket launchers, grenade launchers and stuff. But I think what's really cool about this game is that I can pick a character class like the Engineer, who is a, uh, a, a pretty deep class to play. He can plant landmines, deploy defense turrets, repair vehicles, construct bridges. I'm going to jump into the game and as a brand new player show you how I could actually understand exactly what to do and where to go with no prior experience of the game. And that's a really important goal for us because we know multiplayer combat is really good fun. We know that the hardcore love games like Enemy Territory Quake Wars, but wouldn't it be cool if like your dad or somebody could play the game as well? So the first thing I'm going to do is just follow what it suggests I do on the mission system. On the top left hand corner of the screen it's telling me to construct a guard tower. So all I do is run to the objective. I have no idea what anybody else is doing or why they're doing it, but it's telling me that uh, going to the guard tower would be a good thing. So here's my icon for the guard tower. I just need to hide from this hornet a second. And I just run up to it. Now, even though I've got all of these things in my inventory, I mean, what the hell are they for? And what does that do? You know, I would have no idea as a new player. I can run up to an objective and just hit my use key, one key, and it will automatically switch to the right item and start doing the task. So I don't have to know the game to be able to get stuff done. The whole server now knows Lockie constructed the GDF base tower, so I get kind of rewarded for it. The next thing it's asked me to do is capture a forward spawn. Now as it turns out, our team's actually managed to get this bridge constructed. We've just had this mobile command post. We've just had this mobile command post delivered by a big Magog Sky Crane and our team needs to get it deployed and on the other side of the base. So I'm going to jump in this and man the gun and I'm going to let the box of the game just drive me through. I can of course take on the driving role as well if I want to and I can use third person cameras if that's my preference. Of course because I'm playing against bots and they know what they're doing, they understand every tactical possibility in the game. They know how to use the large majority of weapons, vehicles, deployables and items. They will also just get on with the job themselves and carry on trying to deploy the MCP. So I'm going to focus on this mission to capture the forward spawn. I just run straight through to the forward spawn. Now, this is pretty important. It's strategically very significant for the team because it pushes us forward, captures new territory. But I don't need to understand any of that. If I look at the command map, we've got a whole new piece of territory. We're able to deploy new stuff, get new stuff in the game. And I've done all of this stuff and got halfway up the scoreboard without any knowledge of what you know the whole team is actually trying to achieve. And that's really the goal with Enemy Territory Quake Wars. It doesn't matter whether I want to play a character class, for example, like the Field Ops, who's responsible for calling in you know, large amounts of artillery support and airstrikes and that kind of stuff. I'll be guided through playing that character class, so it's really straightforward and easy for me to do that. I spawn into the game as a Field Ops. One of the first missions that I get is to deploy the fire support. Now, fire support allows me to attack things from a distance. So I just run to a location where it feels a bit safer. I have this deployment interface. You know, I can't deploy on red stuff. I can on green. That's pretty intuitive. This is good for personnel. This one is good for attacking vehicles. And this one's good for just sending a huge missile towards the enemy base. 
Just like the mobile command post, this will get delivered by a Magog Sky Crane, and then I'm going to be able to use it to attack the enemy. Now, while I'm playing with bots on the server, and they're doing all of these tactical things, I'm kind of learning how to play as well, even though I'm playing offline with bots. So when I go online and I play against humans, I don't feel like a kind of newbie who doesn't really know what he's doing. Here's my Magog Sky Crane delivering my strategic strike missile. Now I'm pretty confident that as soon as this goes down, the Hornets are going to find out about it and come over and start attacking it. And I've immediately, now it's been deployed, been given another mission to destroy an anti-vehicle turret. Now our level designers have invested quite a lot of effort in designing these maps to come up with all kinds of little routes and stuff that you can use to get to cool locations. What this means is that you as a player, I mean I could drive up here in a Husky quad bike or I could just walk up this route, but across the entire level there are lots of spots and locations that you can use to get height advantages and stuff like that on the enemy. And obviously as a guy who calls in fire support, this is a pretty good location to be because I get a really nice view of the enemy base. And down there you can see is my mission, which is the side radar that I need to destroy. So I'm just going to go ahead and target it. And immediately my strategic strike missile launches. And of course I've completed my mission. So I've just played through two character classes just to give you a really small idea of what it's like to play just as the humans, just as an engineer, just as a field ops. You can be right on the front line, getting involved in the action, blowing stuff up. You can drive and fly the vehicles. You can do a whole bunch of stuff in the game. But what you certainly don't need to do is be scared that you won't know what to do. This is cool. Have you seen the airstrike? I can control the rope, the rope that comes in. Here it comes. We put out B to 1. And we just wanted to test hardware compatibility, so we put a really small map in the build. We weren't too worried about visuals or anything. And I think a lot of people went, hang on, this doesn't look like the screenshots. We're like, well, it's a B2, it's not supposed to look like the screenshots. They're like, well, we're judging it like a demo. It's like, well, don't judge it like a demo. You're supposed to send us feedback. So we put out B to 2 now, and that's this map. And I mean, I'm playing on you know, current gen hardware, like the new 8800, but even on the recommended system specification now, you know, it, it looks very different from what people have played you know, on, on beta 1. So I think that, um, yeah, I, I, I think anyone who played beta 1 or they heard that beta 1 didn't look as good as the screenshots or whatever, just remember it, you know, it was a beta, it wasn't meant to show off the game. But we are releasing a demo, the target is, you know, middle of September sometime, definitely in advance of the game, so we don't mind people playing before they buy it and we've got enough integrity to do that. We've got a release date now, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's going to be released on September 28th for the whole of Europe and uh, Asia, Australia and October the 2nd for uh, the US. So that's pretty cool because the game's being released for the PC in Europe ahead of the uh, United States for once. I require mines.